Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this one, I'd like to show you more and uh, using Revolve features and more specific than controlling our splines a little bit so we don't get this Flintstone-esque uh, sort of a uh, wine glass that looks unstable, top-heavy, and weak in the base. We want to get something that looks a little bit better than that. So let's go ahead and take our Revolve feature and let's just go ahead and delete that. Go into our sketch, right-click on it, edit the sketch, click on the spline, we're going to go ahead and delete that too, and we're going to delete the other lines that are associated with it. And what I like to do, and we're going to make this normal too, our view orientation so we can see a little bit more what we're doing. We're going to put in some lines in here that are going to define kind of loosely our parameters of our wine glass. For instance, the measurement on the bottom of my wine glass is about two and a half inches, so we're going to make a line uh, across the bottom, another uh, center line, that's going to define the very edge of the base down here. We're going to make that with the dimension half of that value, which is going to be inch and a quarter. So this is going to be the, uh, the base of our wine glass, and as I mentioned, we're about three inches up, we're going to put in a, uh, we're going to start the curvature of our wine glass. So we're going to go ahead and put a line in here also to find the midpoint of that line. And let's put a dimension in that, we're going to make that about, uh, just about three inches. Now the width of the wine glass, perhaps in the stem, looks like it's about a quarter of an inch. So why don't we put a line in here and we'll define that as maybe being an eighth of an inch from the side. So we're going to make sure that our spline doesn't exceed that line. So we'll make that point one two five. And we can extend that to the bottom down here and maybe the top up here too. It's kind of a rough boundary. So the bowl of the wine glass, I measure mine about three and a half inches uh, in uh, diameter. Let me go ahead and measure that one more time. So it looks like in the very top it's about two and a half inches and about three and a half inches, about three inches at its maximum. So we're going to put in two lines here. Let's do our maximum line first. So that's three inches. We're going to make that an inch and a half. And at the very top, we're going to put a line that's going to define uh, where, the, where it's going to begin to fold in on the top a little bit and that's going to be an inch and a quarter. So, that kind of defines our wine glass in a way. Let's now begin to draw our, uh, our spline. Start from the center for the origin down here. We're going to draw a line uh, almost out to the end here. And we're going to let that finish with the spline. Go to the spline like we did before. Click in that point. Okay, click in that point. Let's go ahead and start that over again. I think I have two splines and I don't really want that. Might be difficult to, to find that later. Then we'll go around the corner and we'll adjust those points so that they either are on that line or very close to it. Now we remember we want to keep our the stem of the wine here in the middle of our wine glass in the middle about a quarter of an inch. So we'll go up to about like that and maybe go over the side and eventually work our way to the maximum which is going to be perhaps there and then when we get to the very top we're going to make sure that we're at our minimum. We're going to click some points in there too. And then our minimum on the top where the glass begins to fold in is going to be right there. When you're done with your spline, right click, go to end spline, and there you have it. That's some of it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, coincident relationship. I'm going to add a spline point over here and you can add these points by right clicking and this gives you a whole bunch of different options if you go to your spline. So I'm going to add a spline point here and see if I need any other spline points, maybe one more here, just to help with the curvature a little bit. These spline points, as mentioned in the earlier film, do give you the ability to move around some of those uh, points associated with the spline and manipulate it in one way or the other. For instance, this one, uh, we can take our, um, uh, our poles that influence that point and maybe curve it a little bit so we can get some decent curvature there. Uh, take this line with these points, kind of move that out a little bit so it's not quite touching. This is kind of clicking on top, so I'm going to make the influence of that point just a little bit less, or a little bit more over its neighbor. So that looks a little bit better. What we're missing on this thing is a curvature over the top in order to pick up this side of the wine glass, the inside of the wine glass, and then uh, everything else should fall into place. So I think that's enough editing for this film. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up in the next film, and we will join you there.